Good afternoon and welcome to the this afternoon's special video on this, the Hornby Class 60. Um, it's not a video I really want to make to be honest because it's it's not necessarily the stuff that's good with it, it's the stuff that, that annoys me, it's bad with it. it. It's one of those models that had such great potential and yet again Hornby have bodged it up and let it down. Detail wise, it looks nice, it runs nice. There's only a few issues on it that, that I really, really nag me, to be honest. I wanted to run it yesterday for the video, and instead I had to put the uh, Ralph 37 in place of it because it failed. And when I say it failed, what happened was the lights weren't working. There was no electric, nothing to it whatsoever. Didn't do nothing to it, put it on the track today, runs fine. Now, I think some of the issues really are down to one thing. The main issue, one of the main issues, to be honest, I think is the fact um, the body isn't screwed down. There are no screws on this loco screwing the chassis to the body. Now the downside with that is when you put your chip in, sometimes the body rides up. So when it's on the ground or on the track, there's no electricity going to it, but you can press it and it works. For a model that costs so much, why not put screws in it? It's a really ridiculous, stupid thing. I don't know if it's on the earlier 60s, but this is one of the later ones, and it's on this. And it's annoyance more than anything, because, because the loco does run brilliantly. It goes over most of the points. It's a really nice loco, let down by the fact that Hornby haven't bothered to put screws in it. I don't know why. Is it cheapness? It's, it's one of those things. It's really, really annoying. The other annoying thing with it is the coupling system. It's mounted to the body, not the bogies. So around some corners it's fine and some corners it's not. It depends on your loads. If you look at these wagons, pulls them around the corners fine because they're weighted down, which is at the other end of the rake. I've got these in because they're again weighted down. I'm putting these little dapo wagons because they're not they're not that heavy, they're there's really nothing to them, they're quite light. If that's at the end of the loco, when that's pulling it around the corner, it'll rip this off the track and derail it. Happens virtually every time. So yet again, it's, it's another cock up Hornby have done, and it's something they haven't learned on because it was on the earlier model of the 60s, and yet it's still on here. Uh, Hornby, to me, used to be quite reputable, quite a good manufacturer. I think that these days they're letting the modelers down. I used to run eight pin chips that were Hornby's DCC. None of my chips are Hornby's now because they just don't work properly. They're, they're not good, to be honest. And the other side of it is it can pull really long trains. Slight error by me, then I've actually sent this loco down the up line, but there you go. Another dap old wagon derailing and apart from its problems this is an absolute gorgeous model it's just a shame that Hornby's care and consideration didn't take part in it when building it that's a shame with Hornby though to be honest because years ago when I had my old, old, old model Hornby was the company to go to it was the company that I bought most of my models from now I've got what one or two locos at Hornby 60 and the 56. I don't own a 50 anymore because I'm out of problems I had with it. It's just shame, really. Get your act together, Hornby. Um, that's it from a moaning video from a point of view. Um, it's my gripes, my complaints gone. Um, thanks for joining us.